Okay, so um, we need to think back to something uh, about an old reaction, the aldol condensation. And a specific aspect of chemistry, this is a reversible reaction. So reversibility is what we're going to look at. So let's, let's look at a classic old out all condensation, we might take a ketone, we might take an aldehyde, and we treat these together with sodium hydroxide, and we will get an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. This is a reaction that you should understand. You should be able to produce the mechanism for. There are other videos for this, but this should be a comfortable idea to us that how we make alpha beta unsaturated ketones through an aldol condensation. So let's look, at, let's look specifically at some of the last steps in this reaction. Um, at some point in this reaction, we are going to form a beta hydroxy ketone. And there's beta. The hydroxy is in the beta position. Beta to what? Beta to the ketone. So this will under our reaction conditions, react with sodium hydroxide. I'm not going to show the mechanism, but sodium hydroxide react, will react with this. And we will sometimes form a new enolate. Now, the idea that this is reversible shouldn't be a real stretch. Okay, we, we can deprotonate one of these alpha hydrogens and form an, a carbanion, and that carbanion can go back and find maybe a water molecule and deprotonate that water molecule and go back to the beta hydroxy ketone. So that's a reversible process. Sometimes when this beta this enolate forms, we are going to kick out this alkoxide. and that generates our alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Now, we've always said this is a reversible reaction, but we haven't really talked about the consequences of it being reversible. And we're gonna bring up these consequences now. So is it, when we say that this last step is reversible, what we're saying is it can go backwards as well. And it totally can. So this hydroxide, it's electron rich, it's basic, it's also nucleophilic, and as a nucleophile, it can attack this molecule. And when it does attack this molecule, sometimes it attacks at the beta carbon. And where, when, it, when it attacks this beta carbon, this beta carbon already has four bonds. It's going to have to break a bond. And we push those pi electrons up onto uh, the alpha carbon. And we go back to this enolate in the middle. That's what we're saying when this is reversible. We can kick out the hydroxide, and the hydroxide can come right back into the molecule. And you might look at this and say, wow, if at this last step, if I were to say we have this hydroxide, and it's electron-rich, and it's a nucleophile, I don't think I would imagine that the nucleophile would attack at the beta carbon. Maybe I'd attack the carbonyl. But who in the world would think it could attack the beta carbon? Well, it can. And this is a type of reaction called a Michael addition. It's a pretty important reaction. It's a, in a family of reaction called conjugate additions. And conjugate addition just, just refers to the fact that we have a bunch of pi bonds strung together. They can all, they're all kind of in resonance with each other. They're conjugated, just like a three pi bonds in a benzene ring are conjugated. But this is a, a, a big class of reactions and, and it um, opens up a lot of possible other reactions that we haven't seen up until now. So this is a conjugate addition or a Michael addition.